Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. So it's been a marvellous game here. Welcome to part number 4 on Kutti Story and we've got a very very special guest all the way from uh, Jalandhar sorry I should call him uh, probably an Englishman but the current batting coach of the Indian cricket team Vikram bhai welcome also how are you doing I am all good Ash good to see you again <laughs> just in a day 24 <laughs> hours man uh, actually yeah, we were yeah. supposed to do this on uh, midway from Australia to Dubai right we were supposed to do it somewhere on top of the Indian Ocean didn't quite happen in the flight uh, so do you prefer this or would you have rather done it on the flight This this looks good. This sounds good. I I think yeah. we were too right. tired. I think on the flight, anyways. Too yeah, sleepy. Yeah, I was. I was pretty sleepy as well. I saw you sleeping, so I thought I'll just take a chance. Uh, I want to pick on something very particular. A lot of people said one of the successes of our batting unit ever since that uh, you know that quick thirty six all out that we had uh, was the way we played Nathan Lyon. Uh, but that cannot be just happening overnight, or it cannot be rocket science because through the lockdown. there was one particular coaching staff who was constantly in touch and you also made a presentation uh, to me personally you made a presentation so i'm sure you must have made it with a lot of other people on how we were going to play this australian tour uh, so can you talk us through a little bit about why you made these presentations and this attempt through the lockdown basically it started from new zealand actually uh, i i joined indian team as a batting coach in september last year so new zealand was our first tour abroad and we didn't do too well on the tour as you recall so analyzing that as a coach what we could have done better i thought that there was a lot of discussion you know how the bowling unit will be how new zealanders will be bowling and and how we should bat but it was all talk we never really worked on those areas you know we any didn't any have any times sorry any example of that uh, talk and walk the talk I mean, we knew that they're going to bowl in one particular area. They'll be challenging our discipline basically most of the time. So there was a lot of talk, but did we really practice that? Did we really, you know, work out that what should our response be towards that? Which are our scoring areas? Again, discussions were there, but there were hardly any work done because we didn't have enough time. I thought on the tour. So analyzing that after when the once the lockdown happened, so I thought that from here the Australia is going to be our next big series. and if if i am right what i felt earlier then we should maybe start working on it now so that is one that is the time when i got together with hari hari prasad who is our analyst and we discussed about things that we can maybe present to the batting batting group and you know start discussing what to expect in australia what the bowling unit will be like and what areas they'll be bowling and what should we do if they start bowling in those areas and actually i mean i just dis- had a discussion with you we predicted in that uh, during that presentation itself that somebody like puji you know ajinkya virat they as a bowling unit they might not get too many balls outside the off stump because that's where they have scored in the previous series so i my question to all the batters was that if this is the area the bowling unit is going to bowl to you what will your response be you know what are the shots you are looking at and where are the areas you will be looking to score and not only discussing that i mean it was discussed that they should start practicing it now rather than waiting for the australian tour to start i asked most of them to start practicing it even during ipl whenever they get the opportunity i mean if this is the way we want to play nathan lyon so we should start practicing these shots now we should start doing this now whenever they have the opportunity during the nets and most of them i think did that so i think we were much much better prepared for this tour right so my question then is pat cummins mitchell stark hazelwood have been the wrecker in chief for australia over the last uh, whatever years uh, but why nathan line how does it how does how does he form the important foil that the focus was solely on nathan line was it because of how we batted against him or how he meant to the australian team? both i thought you know he has been pretty successful against us in all our previous series and i think i always believe that he is the bowler who gives them really that balance you know all three all the fast bowlers they bowl well they are good bowlers without any doubt but he is the one who gives them control and while giving them the control he was also picking up wickets at the important times so my idea was that this is one bowler if we can handle him better 
will handle the Australian attack better. We'll put them under more pressure if we don't give him wickets or score more runs against him and more quickly. So if we start doing that, that will put more pressure on the remaining three three bowlers. Right, fair enough. And uh, my my next question is taking us to Adelaide, the more contemporary thing. Uh, having prepared all this, having faced Nathan Lyon and all of these things, you said walking the talk and all that. And all of a sudden, we got bowled out within 20 minutes for 36. How was your feeling? A poor tour to New Zealand as a batting unit, like you rightly said. And then a 36 all out to start off the tour with a pink ball. What was your feeling? What were you thinking? That was deliberate, Ash. You, you didn't realize that. Huh? We, wanted yeah, to build, we wanted to build up the momentum for the series, actually. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, after those discussions, when we, when we reached, uh, when we arrived in Australia, I genuinely believe that we have prepared really, really well. Like we had some good practice sessions. The batting unit, uh, the test batting unit was with us throughout the ODI and T20 series. So again, lots of practice sessions, a lot of, uh, you know, bowling in the rough and playing against all spinners and short balls and the balls coming into you, how you're going to do a lot of discussions going on, a lot of preparation. So I, and we started off well, first innings, we took some 50, 60 runs lead. So everything was going, you know, as you thought it should be going. And then suddenly that, that third day morning, something happened. And I mean, there was no ex explanation for that. It was so, so quick, actually. It, it happened so quickly that there was nothing to think, actually, what happened. We were just, I think all of us were just in a, in a kind of a shock, actually. It was funny as well, because in the morning, I remember particularly that uh, Bumra was saying that he's feeling a little stiff. Bumra was the night watchman in, who was yeah. batting at the time. Because he has had bowled a long spell the previous day. So I was telling him that you'll get a day's break, definitely, before you start bowling now again. <laughs> who knew that he'll be bowling in <laughs> before yeah. lunch itself? 30, 35 minutes time. In fact, Sridhar, I uh, had a chat with Sridhar and Sridhar was telling me he went uh, to give Rishabh some practice from the rough. And yeah. before he finished and came back, the innings was done. He said we were eight down. So, uh, yeah. how, was, how was the mood inside the inside the coaches, uh, you know, so-called arena where you all sit together? What were you talking? Were you talking something, trying to be proactive or everything was too quick? It was all too quick. I think. You know, there was even after getting out and losing that game, after that, when I was looking at the highlights or looking at the, the wickets, how they got out, I couldn't fault, find any faults, actually. It was just that good balls and we just kept nicking them and everything was caught, actually. So, later, in the hindsight, we were thinking maybe the intent should have been better, could have been better, you know, we could have been more attacking or something, but not really, actually, because if you keep getting out after playing five, six, seven balls, Intent doesn't come into question, actually. So, it just happened. Absolutely no explanations, actually. So, this, this intent is a topic or, or, a, or a word that we hear a lot of time when we are batting. And I, I remember also, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, not, not very big, but after this innings as well, uh, some of the batters talking about intent, you know, if you had shown more intent in the second innings, the bowlers couldn't have bowled in the same spot and stuff like that. But like you said, how, what is the balance between showing intent or not showing intent? Because I remember the last Adelaide test we played in 2018, KL Rahul went and hit, you know, uh, Hazelwood or Pat Cummins over extra cover for a six in the second yeah. inning. Is that what we talk about as intent when you go out to bat in the second inning? So, what exactly is intent according to you? Intent is what, what you want to do as a batting unit or as a batsman when, when you're batting in there. Intent has to be connected with your game plan, what the team needs at that point of the time. Batting, I always believed, and we've spoken about it, is always about scoring runs. It's not just batting there. It's about scoring runs for your team. And you need to find the best way to do that while, while you're inside. So playing with intent, again, is not being too aggressive or not being too defensive or tentative. It's playing with, you know, looking to score runs in the best, in the safest way possible, basically, without losing your wicket, if, if you can. So, when you say intent is the best possible way, so it's not about looking to survive the first half or you just go out there and look for run scoring options. No, I mean, if if you're playing on, on a wicket or in the conditions or against a bowling attack where leaving is important or playing with discipline is important, so that's, that also comes under intent. You know, having the intent to survive that period or play through the tough spells of a bowler, that also is intent. Defending well is also intent, part of intent, I think. Right. Getting all out 36. And this question cannot be asked to anybody else. I think it's the most pertinent uh, to be asked to you. Virat made 70 runs in the first innings. Uh, probably started running out of partners in the second innings. Bowled out for 36. 
and he was also leaving genuinely and honestly tell me how did you feel at that point of time did you feel like three uh, three tests that we have lost we've not batted so well now virat is leaving what do we do was that running through your head or what did you feel to be extremely important i didn't really feel any any such things actually you know i yeah. still believe that we have prepared well and looking at those highlights or the way the wickets had fallen i don't i didn't think that anybody batted poorly or played a bad shot or you know they threw away their wickets it didn't really happen so i had to tell myself that this is just one off innings or one off incident and if you remember i had put in a message next day in the in the group that these are the times you know when the doubts can creep in where you start doubting your because a lot of people will experts so called experts and people and media will start talking about uh, technique for uh, faults in technique and preparation and methods and this and that so my message to the whole group was that you know this is the time that we back our preparations and our methods the way we we have prepared well we have to believe that so just keep backing that keep backing yourselves and eventually we will will do better and that was i think fortunately from the head coach from the captain from virat this this message came through you know everybody said the same thing that this is one off in- incident or one off innings we need to forget about it like shridhar i heard him talking in your show and telling that let's look at this as a three game series from here onwards you know so and that's that's how i think the team looked at it and that's how we played after that i thought right looking at it as a three match series and taking it forward and you know completely forgetting the innings might be easier said than done right uh, the next game in melbourne was supposed to happen in three days but we gave ourselves another couple of days break because of what happened in adelaide no, so you know, i never i never i never said that you forget about this this innings yeah. i think i think I, the message i was trying to give or as it as team management all of us were trying to give us that you of course analyze what happened think about it what are the areas we need to work on and what we need to improve but then move on and that is that is needed to be done even after you the won the next game i think you know after winning the next game in melbourne the same message was given being given again that analyze again if there are areas that we can improve on and move on don't get stuck with the result basically whether you've lost or whether you won right okay so now now that you you actually mentioned the point and led me to the next question you said a lot of experts analyze it talk about technique you know they give a lot of opinions at this point of time i have received a lot of whatsapp messages when things aren't going right as a batting coach you must have got a few whatsapp messages did you or you never got any i don't i don't really get any i don't uh, get any me- whatsapp messages because i hardly hardly respond to those kind of messages but yeah but you kept hearing things and i i could make out that people will be commenting out techniques and preparations and this and that but if if we see as as coaches we keep telling players that we we need to focus on process and not on the result so we as coaches need to walk the talk basically we also need to focus on the process and not only on the results and right. that's what i think all of us were trying to do at that point fair enough 36 all out now you're moving on to the next test uh, we bowled really well at melbourne in the first on the first day we were batting again back against the wall so to say the batting was looked upon like you know very very intriguingly about what's going to happen and all that i remember still as sitting there with the ice bag on my shoulder that you had your own laptop and you were sitting outside you were not sitting inside the you know change inside the sort of uh, viewing area what were you going through the ball was seeming in fact pat comments i think Bowl three, four overs where, didn't, where the ball didn't even make contact with the bat. What were you thinking then? Were you under uh, pressure? What were you telling yourself? I, I mean, I generally don't feel pressure because I generally, genuinely believe that it's the it's the players who are playing who are under pressure. Okay. As coaches, you are sitting out. I mean, in the last game, you didn't play, and you was you spent quite a lot of time with the coaching staff in our room. So we are in a very helpless kind of a situation where you can't really do anything actually once the game starts. Yeah. You know? So, of course, I was just looking at the way we are playing, and Cummins bowled superb spells. I mean, throughout the series, I think he was the best bowler. Hazelwood, on and off, yes, as well. So, I was just looking at them and basically what we are doing. If there's anything, looking at some some things, how the feet were moving, what how we were responding to it, and just if you remember that we, again in the batting group, we had discussed that we'll we'll try and bat in pairs. we'll just look for partnerships we'll look to end sessions and play through the sessions and not really look too far beyond that and that's what i wanted the players to do and that's what i think we did well in that game 
Right, Melbourne. When it comes to Melbourne, I I was more intrigued about the second innings than the first innings. We had about 70 runs to get, and we had yeah. lost like two wickets in 20, 25 runs. I still yeah. remember I didn't come out of the toilet until we got to 65. I was just sitting there. <laughs> somebody asked. I asked somebody. I asked. I told Mayank. Just inform me when we get to 65. We'll all go outside and then we'll go and you know start looking yeah. for that sort of a. Did it ever strike you that you know 70 runs to get? Oh my God, we are so close to the victory. Did it happen to you or you were again you know in the state of nil? No, I said. I mean, of course, your all kind of thoughts are going through your mind after getting 36 all out. You know, you start thinking, can can that happen again? But again, you know, I believe that this would that was one off thing, and the wicket was playing pretty well. Shubman, even in the first innings, he he scored some runs and he looked very very good. So, absolutely, I mean, there were some nerves n- nerves there, but nothing nothing more than that. And once we started hitting those runs, and Shubman started way. Playing the way he was playing, and yeah. so it was pretty comfortable after after that. Right. And now, now I, I waited for all these times to go to the third test where you actually your your sort of wish had come through. For six years, India's highest opening stand was 63. Is that right? Yeah. You kept That's... on putting it in all of your batting presentation, saying, you know what, 63 is our highest, and that happened in 2014. It's been six years since we had an opening stand, but that opening stand happened in Sydney, right, between Rohit and uh, Shubman Gill. Yeah, both back-to-back innings we scored 70 plus runs. I still believe we can do much better than that. The quality of batters that we have, but yeah, it, it was a start. So as a batting as a batting coach, of course, you were you were wanting to achieve a lot many things in a in a series, but opening was one. And the other other aspect is where you I think play a role is the the tail. It's the last four batters scoring runs. So that is where we've been pretty poor as well. So that is now the next concern or next area I really need to work on. Isn't so this that, isn't this Australian tour one of the better tours as, as far as what the tail end has put in as a show? Uh, like yeah. you, yeah, yeah, we have improved, but I I believe we can get a lot better. We we no, need. We need to discussion with all the bowlers during the lockdown, right? About what they were doing towards the end and all that. How was this? How how did that discussion pan out? Why did you do that? Again, I, uh, that presentation thing happened with the individually with all the batters. We had just uh, pre- like the presentation we had with you as well that how the last couple of series uh, we've done as a batting unit or a person has done individually as a batsman. The areas the bowlers have bowled to him, the sc- the areas where he has scored runs in, and looking at those uh, those graphs and those uh, visuals, where do you think the bowlers will be bowling this series? And if they are bowling in these areas, what will your response be? You know, how are you planning to score runs, and what are your game plans going to be? So that's the kind of discussion I had with all the batters. Then we had one discussion with all the bowlers, basically. That this is the this these are the stats that we have in Australia for last couple of series, which was pretty poor, actually, to be honest. So how do we work or get better at this? So how you feel that you can get better at this? So. the the idea given to them was that stop looking to score runs i just want you to play 10 more balls individually and if we can start adding to the more balls that you bat i'm sure from the other side somebody will score more runs so if we can just start working on again on the partnerships and if you can just give yourself time to stick in there and show some character you know some fight that you don't want to just throw away your wicket and go out so if we can start doing that will do better and that started happening actually i still won't say that we have really you know started batting really well with the tail but we at least it looked like there was some more effort being put in by by the tail enders we've been trying to give them a lot of batting whenever they bat we have nets so that has been happening so now couple of areas i'm thinking that we need to work on and hopefully we'll start doing that You've been you've been blessed with some wonderful uh, tail enders in the in the last two series. Like uh, for example, uh, you groomed Natarajan to making his first run in the last ten innings. He got off the mark with a flying start. He he hit the ball a long way. It went to mid off. So that mm-hmm. is one of the blessed batsmen that you got an opportunity to work with. Can you talk us through about about how you uh, unearthed this talent from Natarajan to make that run? So Natarajan, as you know, uh, joined the team as a net bowler, as and as luck would have it that he. he got into t20 team and odi team and had his debut there but test cricket i don't think anybody was imagining that he there will be a situation where he might be brought in and might play the test match so he is one guy actually who never batted in the nets also 
I kept asking him that, do you want to bat? And he would say no, because he also didn't really feel or believe that he's going to, you know, play. He, he might be and he might end up playing a test test match. So last test match when you had these injuries and suddenly there came a situation which was being discussed that Natarajan might play. So I made him bat. I took him out. I made him pad up and started throwing some balls to him. And I could see that he can bat. It's you know. So I asked him, when was the last time you batted? He said, maybe a year back. <laughs> <laughs> Tamil Nadu. I said, you, you're telling me you never even batted in the nets even I, during IPL? He said, no, I never batted. <laughs> so, you know, you know the interesting story about Natarajan is he actually doesn't carry a kit bag to even the IPL. Yeah. He doesn't carry a kit. And I asked Saha, uh, how does he bat? Saha said, I have actually never seen him bat. Because even mm -hmm. when the coaches offer him to bat, he says, no, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm bold enough. And so except, he, for Hari, except for Hari Prasad, who's the video analyst, nobody has seen him bat, I think. In fact, Hari Prasad had heart attacks, you told me, when he was batting, right? Yeah, yeah. he was really worried about him. When, when Stark was bowling to him and bowling bouncers, so Hari sitting next to me was like <laughs> dying. He, in fact, Jinx, I remember, came up and said, we'll declare the innings when Natarajan was batting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, did. Right, he uh, felt like he hurt or something. But. Yeah, yeah right. another interesting uh, anecdote that I wanted to pass by you. So, this communication is something that you've always thrived on in the center, right? So, I, you you spoke about it and you even vented it out to Ravi Bhai about how I guided Siraj through his batting nets. Uh, yeah. About not being a stationary target. Can you just carry our viewers through what that is all about? I mean, Siraj, uh, Siraj can bat actually. You know, he batted in the nets and... In one of the practice games, he had a partnership with Bumrah of 80-90 runs in the in the end, and he batted pretty reasonably well. So I was happy the way he bats, you know. So one of the one of the net sessions, he comes into bat, and I started throwing with him, and suddenly he just jumped from the leg stump guard and stood outside off. The first ball I bowled to him got, you know, hit him in the mid on the middle stump, where he was standing somewhere on the seventh eighth stumper. I said, "What are you doing?" said, no, I had a word with uh, Ashwin <laughs> and he has told me to move around the crease and not be a stationary target. I said, but that situation must have been if somebody is bowling bounces to you. First, you need to see if the bowler is bowling. So, yeah. So, please start, stop interfering with the with, with the betting. So, <laughs> I thought I, this is a great platform to actually clarify this. I told Siraj, Siraj, when Stark bowls, his only intent is to bowl short and hit the bowlers. So, when he's looking to hit you with bouncers and he puts field around, if you can make yourself moving around the you know crease and then defend the ball straight, it will be great. I was never aware of this whole strategy where he thought he could step outside the off. <laughs> so, this that's has to do with interference. Yeah, that's what that's what happened. So, you you need to, next time you have this conversation, make, make sure that you really discuss the details of what you're trying to suggest. So this this had me in splits when you told about uh, told this uh, story to me yeah. in the last match. So another uh, another aspect that I wanted to cover about uh, two people, two very interesting people that uh, we discovered. Uh, it'll be unfair to say discovered. Uh, the first person is Shubman Gill. I call him Jack and Jill went up the hill. So can we say Jack and Gill went up the hill in this series? Uh, special talent, isn't it, Vikram? Bhai? He is. He is. Yeah. Not this series. I mean, all of us who've been working with him, he's been around the team for now, now more than a year now. All of us, not not one guy, but all of us, I think, genuinely believe that he's something special. And uh, once he gets into the team, he'll do wonders for the for, for the Indian team. And I think this series has shown uh, shown all of us that he is the special talent that we all believe that he is. And hopefully, if he keeps working hard, he'll he'll get to a level where you know he'll, as, he as should a... somebody who should play for India in all three formats for many many years to come, basically. Right, as a, as a batter, uh, you 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 opened the batting for India yourself uh, in the in the in the in the nineties. And uh, as a batter, what sets Shubman apart, uh, Vikram Bhai? Because we were talking uh, in the last test during the Gabba test that how he batted Nathan Lyon unbelievably well. Like you were talking about it, and in that over you jinxed him and you got him out. You got his wicket, in fact. So I wanted to find out what sets him apart as a batter. You leave apart the skills that he has, the the surety, the time that he has against bowlers, which is which is all special. But for me, what really stands out is the clarity of the thoughts. When when we're discussing this uh, this uh, this discussion that we had during lockdowns, when I was calling players and you know discussing with them that what areas we need to do work on and what are your plans, and so 
I'll tell you interestingly when I called him up and I started discussing with him. So what are you doing? The first the the first thing he said is that he's already practicing against the short ball because he's thinking Australian series now. So without me starting the conversation on how the Australian series is going to go, he himself at that point itself was practicing for Australian series. So with other batters, we we came up with the areas that these bowlers bowl and what are your plans? And I was helping, and he had already had that sorted. You know, he was telling me his plans, what he's thinking is Nathan Lyon, what his his plans going to be, what are the how he's going to you know handle him or the short bowling, and he was already practicing that. So that kind of clarity is very very unique, I think, when you know what you want to do, and you're able to do that. Even even in the last game, yes, that uh, I, I want to finish it at that. The last game. At Brisbane, uh, he got out. Uh, he he came out during lunch when when he was batting well and you know looking good. And they had just started bowling short balls to him. So as a as a coaching unit, we were discussing that this is the time we shouldn't really say anything. Just let them bat, you know, and see where we are after the, at T basically, you know. So I just went to him and I just asked him that what are your thoughts on the short balls being bowled to you? And the clarity that of plans that he had, you know, I was surprised actually that if somebody bowls at this line, this is what I'm going to do. Somebody is bowling from that end, which is where the boundary is shorter. Maybe I'll pull for a six. And he had all the answers basically. He already knew what he's going to do. So I had nothing to say to him. I said, just pass. Carry on. You're sorted. No, I, I remember you walking quietly you have up, and then Ravi Bhai asking uh, uh, Vikram, did you tell him about the short ball? This face is very important to get through. And you actually said. He said, if it is below my height, I'll hit it here. If it is here, I'll hit it here. And I was just blown away to think that somebody is able to pick length, height, line, and then also have plans covered for it. And that was just unreal. I'm a big fan of Shubman Gill's batting, but that was unreal to know. Even in the Melbourne, this is an incident that I, I wanted to share. We were we were bowling. I, I'm sure the wicket got flat and we were trying to bowl them out, come in, start, and they were all showing some resistance. And Cameroon Green caught was caught a square leg of a pull. And... He came running to me and said, Ash bhai, jaldi katam kar lo yaar. 40, 50 saran rahega, ma 5 over mein katam karunga. Hmm. I said, wow, <laughs> this is this is unreal, man. We have, we have got a debutant who is walking up and he's saying, katam karo and I will finish it in 4-5 overs and that 250 in a test match. So, uh, this is it, is it a generation thing or is it an individual thing? It's definitely a generational thing as well. You know, you see all these batters coming through. You look at Pant, the way he bats. You look at Gil, Prithvi Shaw. He didn't, uh, unfortunately, didn't have a great series, but the kind of mindset he has is very similar to what you just spoke about. The way Washington Sundar batted in this this series, you know. So, so it's generational things definitely. But Shubman, what stands out for him is that he is extremely, extremely clear with his thoughts. You know, his his thought process and his game plans. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm. Uh, you rightly hit the nail on the head for the next person that I'm going to ask about. Rishabh Pant. Right, uh, so I, I have this favorite line about Punt. Punt gives a heart attack to both teams, the team that he plays for, and also to the opposition teams. Is that how you feel as a batting coach, or uh, what is it? What is the thought process behind using Punt as a floater in Test match cricket? How did you come about it? You use him at you, in fact, wanted to send him at four in the last test, right? In one of the innings, yes, yes, I thought it, if we can do that, if in case we get the start and things like that, but anyways. So it it wasn't really my call. My I cannot take the credit for this because this started in in after the first test that we lost. I mean, Sri has already spoken about where Virat and Ajinkya and all of us sat together before Virat left. So that is where this was discussed, and it actually came from Virat to be honest. That in case we are playing both the left-handers, it will be a good idea if Pant can be sent at number five, so that we can have that left-right combination. So we debated on this a little further, and you know we discussed with Ajinkya also. I had a discussion that that if the wicket falls early, is will it will that be a good time to send Pant? You know. So then we discussed that we let it let him be at number six. But in the second innings, then I said, boss in in Sydney, that this is the time he needs to go five, irrespective irrespective when we lose the wicket because it's the last innings, and we were looking to go for the runs. You know, the intent was to, you know, not to really draw the test match till the point we can, if we can, go for runs. So that was the right time to send him at number four. And all, all of them agreed that includes Ravi Bhai because he he was big on left and right combinations and lefties because he believed from a long time that 
Australians don't bowl that well to left-handers. So we need to bring in a lefty in here somewhere. So it was discussed and Ajinkya agreed that let, let's try at number five, at uh, sending Grishab at number five. And that really worked for us. Yeah. No, no, the, uh, actually, I was telling that if we get a good start, really good start, can we send him at even at number four? But then <laughs> that really didn't happen. No, uh, I think we've, we've got, I, I'm going to relieve you of it. We have got to the climax of the store, which is the GABA. You actually mentioned about GABA, the GABA jinx, the Australian, uh, so to say, uh, the bastion for Australian cricket, where we broke it in the final test. Everybody is aware of it. There was a very interesting day five in the in the, in the the viewing area. Uh, I was very blessed to be there. There are only two individuals right from the morning talking about victory. One was you and the other was me. And we were constantly silenced. Hey, one session at a time, one session at a time. Why did you feel it or was it the nervous energy or uh, can you talk us through the balance that some people wanted to take it slow and we wanted to take it fast? Can you talk us through it as a coaching staff? You know, I think all of us, all of us believed, honestly believed that we can win this one. You know, my, my point was that after losing the first test match and the way we lost it, to come back to win the next one and then draw the third one, I thought we've done exceptionally well in this tour already. So here, even if we lose this test, we are not going to lose anything. I, I, I believe that it's Australians who are under pressure to win this one. And if we get a good start, we should look to win. And we did get a good start. You know, we started off well. We were play, playing well. So Puji was looking superb and solid. And then the, when Rishab started, or when uh, sorry, Gil was batting with Puji, that that partnership really you know gave us a lot of hope. So everybody else was also saying the same thing, but they were saying that let's take it till T or even after T, and then see where we are, how far or close we are. And even I believe that, you know, I was, we were also saying the same thing that let's take it to the last five, seven overs. And then if Rishabh is still there, he can just finish the game in two, two, three overs. But again, you, you also felt that, that once you're sitting in that room, you don't have any control over the batters who are batting <laughs> and Rishabh kept playing the kind of shots that he was playing and giving us all heart attacks, basically. We, uh, so, Rishabh might have given us heart attacks, but there is some person, a person who lent, lent solidarity, right? He, he, he kept being solid, kept taking all the blows. An inter interesting relationship. Anytime I say anything about him, you come and defend Pujara as yeah. if I am the biggest enemy. Can you talk us through this triangular relationship where you are always bagging Pujara and you hate the bowler that I am? Because for some reason, you really sledge him. I don't know why. What's, what's, what's the deal there? <laughs> you really, really after him all the time. And him being one of my favorite players in the team. You know, I love his attitude, the way he bats, you know, the, the way he prepares, actually. As, he's a coach's dream, actually. So, yeah. I have to defend him against you, Was So, he and, you know, I think no praise is enough. For the way he he batted in the last test match and the way he responded to all those short balls and all that injuries that he had, the way he kept on batting, you no know, hats off to him. Played a massive, messy role, I think. No, my my problem with uh, Puji is slightly different. It's a personal agenda because what yeah. happens is every time every time a counter a count, uh, an opponent uh, uh, you know a counterpart somebody like Nathan Lyon is bowling, Puji makes it so hot throbbing for me every time the ball goes up in the air. I am like. You know what? Nobody plays like this man. You are making him look like, you know, unplayable. And eventually, everybody will think I am not able to make the other batsman bat like this. But any any thoughts on this? Does it does it make you make the line look uh, unplayable? He he doesn't. I think he handles him really really well, and he's the, and the numbers show that. You know, he is the one guy who's really batted well against him and scored runs against him. You know, he's averaging something plus fifty plus against him. So he's done well against him, and that's his way of playing. And, you know, we've had these discussions with him where, where he keeps giving reasons why he's doing certain things, which are extremely funny at times. But <laughs> that's the thing. That's that's what I love about him. You know, he has a very set method. He's a, he's a stubborn character. And that and shows that is his strength as well. I think that that is why he bats the way he bats. He he doesn't give in easy, easy. And the only time I've really seen him under pressure is when he's having discussions with you or when he's playing that TT with somebody like Pant. Otherwise, he is never under pressure, I think. The fact of the matter remains, every time I've bowled or played against Pujara, he's got out to me. And you can cross-verify it anywhere. How much ever you back him, that remains the fact. And before I let you go, even though there's been an endearing conversation, I've loved it. I want to ask you one thing. Yeah. Will we ever see Pujara hit an off-spinner over the top? 
we'll be work, work in progress so i'm trying to convince him that at least once go over the top <laughs> he's still not convinced he's giving me great reasons if he goes over the top against moin ali or any other spinner stepping down the wicket in this english series that we are going to play i will take half my mustache out and come and play the game <laughs> this is okay. an open challenge okay that's 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 a great uh, challenge to put across you know and Uji, so let's, let's hope he takes it up you think he'll take it up i'm putting your head on the block uh i don't think he'll take it up <laughs> 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 I had this conversation. I had, and he has a great reason for that. I had this conversation that why don't when everybody is up, you know, can you think going over the top at least one shot so that that fielder is pushed back and you can take start taking singles more easily? And he had a great reason for that. Actually, he said if I do that and they push the fielder back, I'll be getting only one run. But now once then they have all the fielders up, if we can, I can keep. Playing the ball through the gap, I keep getting twos and threes. So, which is a better thing? I said that's a great, you know, reason to keep it down. Then, yeah, carry on. Do you remember the practice match where he hit me over the top of midwicket, where it it actually cleared that midwicket by 16 centimeters? You remember that? Yeah. Right. It almost Now, uh, almost reached the boundary. Don't don't uh, talk nonsense. <laughs> it went for a grand two run, but it didn't go for boundary. <laughs> no, okay. before I let you go, because you said this. you had an interesting conversation where he believed that the ball can not carry to slip when he defended right can you t- tell us about that as well no i'm not telling you any such things you are now just again getting into that mode of sledging him <laughs> which, which I'm, i'm not letting you do uh, jokes about jokes about i hope you know that we are great friends uh, guys don't think that i'm puji's enemy i'm one of his best friends and uh, pulling his leg is is my favorite past time and that's also vikram bhai's favorite past time thank you for doing this vikram bhai been one of the greatest series and you've been one of the greatest Uh, human beings have come across in the team and you are a great addition to us and i've enjoyed working with you thank you so much thanks thanks a lot thanks a lot ash thanks. it was great fun talking to you yeah <laughs> thank you goodbye to zainice superb cheers 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 cheers